Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Pineapple Pulled Pork Al Pastor. That's right, this kind of feels like we're doing more than one video. Since we're going to be brining and wet rubbing and sort of smoking, not to mention making a delicious pineapple salsa, and then finally a fairly epic sandwich. So there's going to be a lot going on here, but don't mistake that for this being difficult. While this takes a little bit of time, this is a very simple and straightforward procedure. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with a big old pork shoulder, which I placed into a dish pan that we're gonna brine it in. And what you're seeing right here is about a nine and a half pound piece, which is mostly boneless, although it does still have the shoulder blade intact. And then the only prep we need to do here before we brine it is I like to make a few slashes through the fat, just barely down to the meat, which I think will allow our seasonings to get in a little better, or not, and I just did that for nothing. But anyway, I'll give that a quick slashing, at which point we can move on to the brine, which is going to start with one cup of kosher salt, followed by one quart of pineapple juice. And then besides that, we will also add three quarts of cold, fresh water for a grand total of one gallon of liquid. And usually a brine contains salt and sugar, but because the pineapple juice is sweet, I'm just going to add that and not add any additional. And as soon as we have all that mixed together, and it feels like most of the salt is dissolved, we'll go ahead and pour that over our butt which is another common and much more hilarious name for our pork shoulder. And if everything's gone according to plan, we should have just enough to cover this. And if not, just make some more using the same proportions. Or you could use a different container, I guess, or a brining bag. But it looks like I have just enough. And then some people like to put something on top of it to weight it down, but I'm not going to, especially since I like to flip it over once or twice during the brining process. And of course, I'll remind you of some of those details in the blog post. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the fridge for anywhere between 12 and 24 hours. And then the only other thing we can prep in the meantime would be our Al Pastor Spice Rub, which I'm loosely basing on the famous Al Pastor Taco. And that will include some kosher salt, some chili powder, and I'm using ancho this time, even though guajillo pepper would be more authentic. I'm also going to add some chipotle, some garlic powder, some ground cumin, or cumin, some cinnamon, and some dry, preferably Mexican oregano. Although any oregano will work, and exactly zero people will know the difference. And that's it, we'll go ahead and mix that up, and then stand there for 12 to 24 hours until our pork is brined. At which point we will very carefully remove it from the brine, and transfer it into some kind of foil lined baking dish or pan. And we will let it drip dry for a few seconds, but we don't have to pat this really dry because that moisture on the surface is going to help our spice rub stick on. And covering our pork in that is our next step. So we'll go ahead and very, very generously apply our spice blend all over. And not just on the top and bottom. We will attempt to get some on the sides as well. And this is a big old hunk of meat. So we want to be super aggressive here. Okay, you actually cannot put on too much. So please use a very heavy hand. And then once that's been accomplished, this is ready to cook low and slow, for as long as it takes for this to become tender. And while you can totally do this in the oven, and it will come out beautifully, I'm actually gonna let mine slowly roast over a big pile of charcoal. And I do like to put a couple bricks on the grill to sort of raise it up a little bit farther away from the coals, but that's optional. But what's not optional is that we need to barbecue this with the lid down, and we have to maintain a temperature of between 325 and 300, which of course is done by adjusting your air vents. And again, I'll touch on that in the blog post. And usually pork is smoked or barbecued at a much lower temperature. Because of our brining, we can actually do this a little bit hotter and a little bit faster. And other than maintaining that temperature range, that's really all there is to this. The only thing I do if I'm feeling really ambitious is every once in a while give it a little base with that rendered fat. And like I said, no matter how or where we're cooking this, we're going to do it until it's tender, which is basically going to be when it reaches an internal temp of about 195. And if you're keeping score at home, mine took about seven hours to get there. Like I said, maintaining a temperature just over 300, at which point I very carefully pulled it off and brought it back inside. And then what we'll do once that's off the heat is go ahead and cover it nice and tightly, and we will let that rest for at least an hour. I mean, if you're totally starving, go ahead and eat. But I think this definitely benefits by a little bit of a rest period. Which, by the way, gives us plenty of time to make our pineapple salsa, which I really wish was pronounced salsa. But anyway, for that, we're going to take some fresh pineapple. That can be if you want in its raw state. But since we probably have hot coals in your grill around, I definitely recommend you roast it first so it gets all nice and smoky and caramelized. 
But either way, we'll go ahead and chop that up as fine as we want. At which point we'll transfer it into a bowl and add whatever else we're going to put in this. Which for me was a little bit of spicy serrano chili. As well as some sweet roasted red pepper. And then since this idea is inspired by a taco, I'm going to throw in a handful of cilantro. Thereby upsetting roughly 10% of my audience. And then we'll go ahead and finish this off with some rice vinegar. As well as a big old pinch of our leftover al pastor spice blend. And we'll go ahead and give that a mix. And that's it. A very, very simple but devastatingly effective condiment for our pork. And obviously, if you want to make this less simple, go ahead. Okay, some grilled onions would be nice. Maybe a squeeze of lime. All right, whatever you're into. I mean, you are after all the Mickey Rourke of your pineapple pulled pork. But just this very simple combination of ingredients I used produced one of the most delicious things I've had in at least the last nine and a half weeks. And that's it. Once mixed, we'll simply pop that in the fridge until we're ready to use it. Speaking of which, once our pork's rested, we'll go ahead and unwrap it. And once we start breaking this apart, what we should find under that dark and dangerous looking crust is beautifully soft, tender, moist, and succulent meat. And a lot of it. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have a thermometer, one way you know your pork shoulder's done is if the shoulder blade comes out clean like this. And hold on here for a second. I am holding one too many tools. And by the way, the meat near that is some of the most delicious in the shoulder, which is why I'm totally going to suck and pull all that off and have a little snack. Oh, and above and beyond the texture and moistness, one great advantage with brining, this meat's basically going to be salted from the inside out. And as they say on bad menus, season to perfection. But anyway, let's go ahead and pull some of this apart and make a sandwich. And in a proper barbecue joint, we would pull this entire thing apart and mix it all together with the rendered fat and, of course, accumulated juices so that every sandwich we make gets a little bit of everything, which I'm not going to do here, although I will do it on a smaller scale in this bowl. So we'll add some of the lean stuff with some of the fatty stuff with some of the crusty stuff, along with, of course, a little bit of our highly seasoned rendered fat. Then we'll take a couple forks and pull it apart. And the finer we shred this, the softer the bite will be. So I do break this down pretty well, but I also like some larger chunks here and there. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and pile that up in a nice soft white bun. And no, of course this is not homemade. Okay, just use something cheap and borderline non-existent from the store. And that's it, we'll go ahead and finish that off with our beautiful homemade pineapple salsa. And that, my friends, will be one of the best pulled pork sandwiches you've ever had. Right, like I've already covered, this is just soft, succulent, beautifully moist meat. And while those al pastor spices are not super pronounced, they are definitely there helping everything else along. Plus, when you combine that sweet and tangy and slightly smoky pineapple salsa, it is just a marriage made in heaven. And by the way, personally, I don't like super smoky barbecued pork shoulder, which is why I usually don't add the soaked wood chips to the coals. Okay, if you're cooking this slow and low over a charcoal fire for like seven hours, I think it's going to absorb plenty of smoke flavor. But regardless of whether you actually smoke this, or just gently roast it over the coals like I did, or even do it in the oven, you're going to be enjoying a profoundly delicious pulled pork. Which is why I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.